Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending this presentation. A number of years ago, as I was still working at the Prime Minister's office in Stockholm, I attended a conference in Jerusalem. As it has come to be over the years, I spent quite a substantial amount of time in, in Jerusalem, and I had developed this little habit to stay at the same hotel, Hotel Ada in eastern Jerusalem. Since most of the meetings I attend is in western Jerusalem, I always have the pleasure each morning to walk through the old city uh, without any particular reason, just to feel you know, the atmosphere of, of this uh, very special city. As I did also this morning, I was, I was on my way to uh, be a part of the Swedish delegation at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Jerusalem. I entered the old city through Damascus Gate and was since still it was early in the morning but was already quite warm almost 40 degrees centigrade and as I was walking the streets of of the old city I noticed in distance an elderly woman walking with a stick or, or rather actually stopped walking with a stick and she stopped at the staircase unable to climb the stairs, and I observed from the distance her efforts in, in putting her foot, her left foot, up on the stair, but she didn't have the strength. And she was putting her body weight on the stick, and she tried to lift her leg, and, and obviously I pitied her. So. I was hoping that somebody would help her before I came up <laughs> beside her, but nobody did, so in 30 seconds or so, I was standing next to her and, and I offered her to uh, grab my arm. And uh, she did more than that. She took her arm around my neck and uh, she took my uh, right arm around her hip and, and all of a sudden we, we were chained together. And I lift her up this first stair and then I realized it was not only this step it's all the steps all the steps through the entire old city in Jerusalem and I was on my way to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs but what can I do I cannot all of a sudden say well I started to help you there but now you better find someone else to help you so I had to help this old lady all the way through the old city and it took about two hours and we would when we were done uh, well, I don't know how exactly to express it, but she was smelling of aftershave and I was smelling something else. And we were extremely sweaty. And I don't know who this lady was. I don't know what religion she belonged to. I didn't even know what language she spoke, but she spoke a lot. She talked constantly as a, a way to, to keep me engaged in this task. I, the only thing I know, it was not English, it was not German, it was not Arabic, it was not Hebrew, but I don't know what language that was. And I don't know if she was a Christian, if she was Jewish, or if she was a Muslim, but the tour ended up in some kind of, of uh, religious uh, hall, which is not very unique in Jerusalem, they are all over the place. Uh, so she went into that room, and I was st standing outside, all sweaty, and thinking, well, I missed that meeting. And then she turned around, she came back to me, she raised both her hands and grabbed my cheeks and kissed me right on the mouth. <laughs> For all I, I know, I, I assume that she is not longer in this world. It's a number of years ago. More or less in the same period of my life, I went with two boys and their fathers to Poland. I have been very involved in combating intolerance, teaching youngsters that are within or in the risk zone of becoming activists in neo-Nazi movements. These two guys were hardcore activists. I have been teaching them both together with the fathers for half a year. And the agreement was that uh, if they volunteered in the teaching, we should go to Poland, to Auschwitz, and to some other sites. And, and this was really thrilling for them, and so we went. 
We saw State Museum Auschwitz-Birkenau, I think over two days. And then we came back to Krakow. And when we came to Krakow, the both the fathers disappeared for reasons that were not acceptable for the tour, so to speak. So there were, I was standing with these two boys that were very much ashamed that their fathers had left them. And I didn't know really what to do, how to comfort them. I decided that uh, let's take a walk together, and they agreed. So we took a walk in Kashmir's. So our hotel was in Kashmir's. And if you don't know, the Kashmir's were the former Jewish quarters of, of uh, Krakow. So we took a walk around those uh, quarter. I was telling the story, what the life was before the Holocaust, that uh, where we are walking now, until the 3rd of March 1941, 60,000 Jews lived, and uh, today there are none, well, practically none. In those days, in the 90s, Kashmir's uh, were not as high fashion as they are today, so all the buildings were standing empty, just as they had been doing for the last 60 years. I was telling the history of Kashmir's. Simultaneously, these two boys expressed their fears of becoming like their fathers, developing drinking problems, uh, being dropouts. So we we're talking about history, we were talking about their lives, we we're talking about their future. And all of a sudden, one of the boys stopped and he said, look, I don't know how to put this, but uh, Auschwitz didn't make much of an impression on me. I, I don't mean to be hostile or to put it in a blunt way, but it was pretty much what I had expected. But what we've done tonight was not something that I had expected. To share you, with you my innest fear, at the same time, see what happened here, I can tell you honestly that I do realize that I do realize that it used to live people here, Jews, and that they were brought from here against their will, and that they were murdered. And having said that, I cannot say that I find any good in that whatsoever. But you know, when I come back to Sweden, my friends, they will expect of me, they will request of me to say that I didn't fell for anything of this Jewish bullshit. That I realized that this all was a part of the Jewish conspiracy, that it was all a hoax. That I didn't care at all. And that I also drank alcohol, which I did not. My friends expect that of me, and I will make them believe that, because I have no other friends. Those are the only friends I have. If you ever hear me say that, please don't condemn me. Please don't be upset with me. I don't have any other friends. And then he bent down, he picked up a stone, and he said, if you ever hear me say something like that, please don't say anything. Just approach me, give me the stone, and say nothing, and I will remember the words I spoke this night in Kashmir's. You see, this old lady in Jerusalem, on the surface, I helped her to come to her congregation room. But beneath the surface, she helped me to bring out the goodness within me. I don't know what meeting I was going to, and I do believe 
If I ever would have gone to that meeting at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I would still not be able today to remember what that meeting was all about. But I have been thinking about this old woman all these years. I'm not thinking about her every day, nor even every week, but I can assure you a couple of month, times each month I think about her. It is not only ideas that forms us. It is the people that surrounds us that acknowledge our action that makes us become what we are. And I never had to give that stone back to Jesper. Thank you for your attention.